All of us that work with .NET APIs are used to doing the same old operations in every single controller. You know what they are, CRUD, create, read, update, and delete. And what do we usually use to do it? Well, Entity Framework, of course. And what if I told you that Entity Framework 7 has completely revolutionized how to go about doing updates and deletes with the new feature called Bulk Update and Bulk Delete. They both make less calls to the database, improving performance, as well as cutting down the lines of overall code that you have to write. So enough talking, and let's show you guys what this new EF7 functionality is all about. As you guys can see here, I have my .NET 7 API open. We have get, post, put, delete. We will obviously focus on these two down here, but let me just prove to you guys that we are getting data back. Right here, we're getting a list of team names and information. Uh, so going to the new changes in any framework seven, we are basically going to be removing and changing how these two kind of how, how all of this looks. The common way of doing it is how it's like this. You go and retrieve something, you go and retrieve something, then you get it back. And then in this case, you're going to delete it, say remove, or you're going to update whatever you need to update. And in both, you're going to call save changes and save changes async. So let's first replace delete team. And then I'll walk you guys through what is going on. And I also want to address that you guys might be a little confused when you hear the words bulk update and bulk delete and think, oh, bulk. OK, that means that I can only do this on X amount of items in a collection or something. You know, I can't just do one at a time, one update or just one delete. And that's actually wrong. Uh, I don't want you guys to be thrown off by that. It will work with a lot of data, but these can also be used as, you know, one off for deleting one item or editing one item. These methods, what they are going to do is directly act on the database and entity framework just won't track them. It's just going to do the changes, not worry about keeping track of everything. It's just going to go create a link query and execute everything in the database and then come back all at once. So now that we've gone through the project, uh, and this is the old way of doing things. Let me show you guys the great update. So when it comes to delete team, we actually can replace the, all this code. So retrieving, removing, and then clicking save with just this one line right here. And then we want to return the rows affected, which are what both of these methods are going to return. What happens here is we basically go to the DB context on the teams table where this team ID that gets passed in and we want to execute delete async what this does is it tells entity framework what we want to go do is just go straight into the database delete this and save we don't need it to come back we we don't need an extra kind of you know back and forth between the api and the database we don't need to go bring it back then delete we just want you to go go ahead go into the database delete it come back and just tell me how many rows were affected quick and simple look how just elegant and beautiful this looks so this is what is called a bulk delete it is this execute delete or execute delete async method. And if you guys have found this video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you guys dropped a like on this video so it can spread to more developers on YouTube. And now that I've shown you guys the cool new way of doing delete, let me show you guys the cool new way to do edit because it looks similar, but it's also just as elegant and I think even cooler. So edit, of course we have, we are going to retrieve from the database, get whatever match based on team ID, edit whatever we wanna edit, and then we call save changes. Well, all of this can be replaced with this right here so we again are going to be returning the rows affected and what we are doing is similar to here with a few more extra steps so we go to our db context our table we are going to use the team id that we want to match because this is what we want to grab to update but instead of bringing it back we are going to call this execute update async it will automatically go into the database and update in there and then come back and just tell us how many rows were affected so, and in here, as you can see, we are passing in what properties we actually want to update. Instead of, if you guys remember, coming back here, you have to, you know, one, and then the next property, and then the next property, and then the next property. We're not doing that anymore. We are now just doing this, where we can set the property inside of here, and you can actually set more. You can actually do set property, and you can actually keep going and do more if you want to and that's how you can update multiple of these properties so you guys can see kind of how this would be very beneficial to have in your application cuts down on code it automatically goes in one time does it in the database and you're just cutting down two trips to one trip you're not also 
tracking with Entity Framework whatever's going on inside of this method as well. So that also speeds things up. And the Entity Framework team has also come out and said they're not trying to replace the save changes, but this is a good kind of complement of if you do have this one thing that you just need to go do really quick and come back and move on with your application, this is just a more efficient and effective way to go about doing this. And this is what I wanted to show you guys. I think this is just an excellent update for Entity Framework 7. For me personally, going forward, I will be using Execute Delete Async and Execute Update Async when it comes to editing and deleting because I think it's just way more efficient. It goes less times to the database as well as it just looks better. It's less code. And I think it's very friendly uh, to any developer that's working on this. So I'm going to be using it. You guys let me know in the comment section if you guys are going to be using this going forward. And if you guys want to take what you just saw in this video and scale it up and actually create your very own .NET 7 API using Entity Framework 7 and learning a little bit more about this, watch this video right here.